Well, fish eaters, we really earned the title now. We're entering the holy season of Lent in a few days. Uh, in early March this year, in 2014. In fact, March 5th, according to my notes here in front of me. The fast laws should be well known to us. We study the basic catechism. I'll give a real brief review. On an ordinary fast day, meet once at the main meal, which is either noontime or evening, depending on our schedule. Not in the morning. Sorry, friends, you want bacon and eggs. Good afternoon. <laughs> Then two smaller meals, which together added up, do not equal full meal, and these are to maintain strength. Fasting should not be that difficult for us in these days, because we're not limited in quantity. We should uh, eat simpler, but we need, we should learn more to eat to live, rather than live to eat, as some of us do. Because, let's face it, gluttony is a big problem in these days. But Lent is a lot more than just uh, being good old fish eaters. And I will remind you there, a couple ember days will drop in. March 12, 14, and 15. For all who have to abstain, it's meat once, except, of course, Fridays. That's why we're called fish eaters. We don't eat meat. So, let us consider Lent from a spiritual aspect. I like to think of Lent as spiritual spring cleaning. In fact, that's one of the things I plan on doing this Lent. Uh, the beginning of Lent on Ash Wednesday, I don't have any specific plans other than uh, fasting and silence and prayer and a lot of work. Uh, the house needs spring cleaning too as well because I have people coming towards the end of Lent. And so I'll be working on a retreat and I'm going to give the kind of retreat I really like to give the one I really need to hear too. So as I'm working on the retreat, I need to hear just as much, as, probably even more so than the people I'll be giving it to. They'll be coming, uh, looks like we have a brother coming and a uh, seminarian coming at the, towards the end of Lent, so they'll be here for Holy Week, depending on what their schedule are, exact arrival dates to be determined. So I'll be working on that retreat and it's always good for me when I work on anything spiritual, because I learn from it. And I've been into my spiritual reading, a book called Summa of the Christian Life. I'm in volume two. Uh, until recently, I only owned volume one, which I read some time back. As a, a friend of mine suggested that this is a good book. In fact, he showed me some excellent things out of, of course, either volume two or three, which I didn't own until recently can thank my aunt for tracking down seven boxes of wonderful books, uh, which include the complete set here. Uh, so I recommend, if you have a chance, get this set of books. Uh, it should be read in the summer because it blows your socks off, the wonderful things you're reading in there. And I've been taking notes. I've got a whole chapter to scan in that is excellent and ties in with some research, and I'll be doing something more on that later. Uh, the chapters on growth and charity, and I'd like to quote just a little bit. Although there are countless created goods that man may seek inordinately, St. John reduces them to three, wealth, honor, and bodily pleasure. None of us who are seeking the religious life are seeking it for wealth. At least, why is not in these days? For indeed, the church is a non-profit organization. I'd like to make it a non-loss organization, but that's another story. <laughs> so, I'll, what I'm going to consider here more is honor and pleasure, because I'm uh, also quoting from a spiritual conference for seminarians, religious, etc., who are studying at home and abroad. <laughs> and back to Summa of the Christian life. By bodily pleasure is understood all those things which the senses of the body may take pleasure. Thus the eyes naturally delight in the beautiful colors and paintings, tapestries, clothing, or the beauties of nature as well as the beauty of the dance or theatrical spectacles, or any kind of visible beauty. My friends, we must mortify our eyes in this age where they are assaulted by many things which we absolutely should not see. 
you're looking here on uh, YouTube. There are things here on YouTube you shouldn't look at. I shouldn't look at. There are things elsewhere on the internet we should not look at. You know what they are. I know what they are. I'm not going to go into detail. We must be especially on the guard against immodesty because warm weather will soon return. Looking at the recent weather port, I got a good week before I have to worry about that around here. And theatrical spectacles. I'm putting this up to you to a little before Lent because I know some of you mortify your eyes by cutting off the internet. And you should be applauded for it. I mean, even if you miss some of my uh, YouTube videos, Fish Eater Fridays, they'll all be there after Easter and you can catch up then. And mortification of the uh, eyes is very important. The eyes, the ears, everything. And let's go back to this Summa of the Christian life. Man's natural curiosity to know and to see all things is satisfied by many books, much visiting and conversation, and other such things. Our books and conversation should be on holy things. There is much to distract us today, and we cannot feed the vice of curiosity. That's a subject unto itself. But we must feed the virtue of studiousness. Curiosity killed the cat, and it kills the soul. And let us go over to the other quote from the Summa of the Christian Life. Under honor are included such things as offices, dignities, titles, privileges, authority, exemptions, and all other things that are related to worldly honor. Following Jesus Christ and his church in this day tends to lead us away from all these worldly things. Yes, I've got a title that is a burden. <laughs> That's kind of interesting. been contacted recently by two different priests, both of whom have the title of Monsignor that have been given by whatever organization they're in. One of them says, I don't need the darn title. Because it's not about titles. It's about doing God's will. And in the church, we should not speak, seek special treatment. Just because we have a position, we are given certain privileges, and we should exercise our privileges only for the good of the church and the good of souls, not for personal benefit. We may be given a privilege uh, because it's something that is given to us because it will help us discharge our duties. And in that case, it's a wonderful thing to have. But we should discipline ourselves. I recall the story of Pope Pius XII. A friend of his, a priest friend, was visiting in Rome in the Vatican over lunch during Lent. And out comes, you know, just this little fair, and the priest looks and says, You genial, you genial, you're the Pope, you do not have to fast. The Pope's not bound by church law. Pius XII says, I do not fast because I have to. I fast because I ought to. That's the type of thing. So if we are exempted from some law for some good reason, we should remember our duty of mortification, which applies to all Christians. In fact, to all people. So let us do our spiritual spring cleaning. Let us examine our conscience. All right, where have I fallen down since last Lent? Be honest. I've fallen down. I know it. I've already started taking a look around. Okay, this is Lent. I'm going to tighten this up. I'm going to change this. I'm going to work on that. Okay? We all have things we need to straighten up in our lives. And let's face it, we kind of tend to relax and take our ease and go, I deserve this. It's time to tighten up. Let us pray for mortification of our bodily senses. And unless you do penance, you shall all likewise perish. So fish eaters, remember this, this Lent. God bless you all. Have a good Lent. Some of you I won't see until Easter. Until then, please pray for me.